guys, welcome back to Room 237, and so my last review was of the original Boris Karloff Grinch, so now we will get to the first Christmas horror film review of 2020. This was a film that I had never seen, actually never really heard of before the other day, right when I saw it, but it's the 2016 Australian film Red Christmas with D Wallace which I found I found on YouTube it was written and directed by Craig Anderson who also produced it along with Belinda King, Brian Moses and D Wallace herself along with D Wallace we have Jeff Morrill, David Collins, Sarah Bishop, Janice McGavin in the in the cast along with Sam Campbell and Gerard O'Dwyer. Now, this film... Uh, again, it is... It is Australian. Except, of course, for Dee Wallace, who keeps her American accent. But this film, it's... It's a home invasion movie. <clears throat> home invasion movie over Christmas. It has some controversial uh, topics, topics in it, controversial political topics, and it just, it feels like it's trying way too hard to get you to think a certain way as far as that goes. It also feels like it's trying to be like the French film Inside, but trying to be more shocking or over the top or trying to put more shocks in there uh the killer is how is uh, try watching this and i dare you not to think of john hurt doing john merrick from uh the elephant man definitely doing an elephant man impression all the way down not just to his lines but his delivery, the shaky, you know, like, please love me, like my mother. Even being given a Christmas present and it's the most beautiful thing. And not even knowing what a present is. So it, <clears throat> but it, it's not nearly as good as the French film Inside. Or it, and yeah, that movie is bloodier, gory. Well, I would say this one's gorier, but Inside's definitely bloodier and more extreme. For those that haven't seen Inside, uh, there's a woman, uh, the eve of her due date for having a baby falls on Christmas Eve. She's left alone. A car accident killed her husband there's this mysterious woman that keeps trying to break into the house we get the idea she wants the baby that's inside of her it's this cat and mouse game anyone else that shows up to help her it, it doesn't work it is part of the french extremity movement so so no matter how the how like what more shocking films are out there, it's still part of the extremity movement, regardless. This is not, but it feels like it so desperately wants to. I guess I'll get right into what I mean by the controversial topics and shocks. It opens up at an abortion clinic. Dee Wallace's character is at an abortion clinic. While she's having a procedure, this religious fanatic runs in there with a bomb, blows the place up. D. Wallace survives, as does, unbeknownst to her, 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 her abortion was botched, and the fetus lived. And someone rescued her fetus, raised it. And then we jump to present day, which takes place in South Wales. Uh, Dee Wallace still has her English accent. 
uh, American accent. As does the uncle of the of the family. It it never says if it's her brother, or her brother-in-law, or more. But her whole family it congregates together for Christmas. We have uh, her her youngest and uh, live-in son Jerry, who has Down syndrome. A younger high school adopted daughter, Hope, who's like, I guess, the, the punky, angsty art student. Uh, her, one of her daughters is also very pregnant with her husband. She's like the foul-mouthed, rebellious, gonna smoke and drink while I'm pregnant uh, mother. And then her other daughter, who is very devout Christian with her, I guess, priest husband. Who we get a little bit of seeds throughout the film that he has some uh, oppressed homosexuality. So it's trying to throw in all these things. Trying to... It, this, but it's also a Christmas. We're going to make it... it, it this film is way heavier, or it's, it's trying to be heavier than it deserves or feels, which is nothing I've ever really respected. It's like, it, it, if you're going to be that heavy, know how to do it. Know how to do it well. Like inside, someone trying to, someone's trying to steal this baby out of a woman's womb on Christmas Eve, but it's able to handle it well. Uh, <clears throat> they all be, we get they all don't get along, especially the foul bell sister and the uh, religious sister. We get this one scene of the killer. Okay, so the killer's on his way to this house. He has bandages all over his face, his hands, he, he's kind of hunched over and kind of walks, a little bit of a gimp, and he has a cloak. He's making his way, and he gets to this one farmer, I guess, or this one farmhand who's sharpening his knife. He's walking through his property, the guy tells him to leave. He keeps trying to get by. The guy beats him up, proceeds to piss on him. And then we get like a faraway shot from that while he's pissing on him, laughing. We get the idea of the killer grabbed it, ripped it off. And then we go on to the next scene where the killer's just gathering his things, walking away from the barn or the shed. And that wheel the guy was using to sharpen his knife is now like buried into his face. Which I don't mind seeing like aftermath shots of kills as long as it's done well. This early in the film, I thought that worked because at least now we get to see what this guy's capable of. We we didn't need to see the whole thing. It actually, I, I think it can make it a little bit more impactful if you just show the aftermath. So, and then we get back to this family. They have their arguments. Uh, they're about to open presents. Which, one, well, first they have... Uh, I, I think it's actually a dinner. They're, they're having dinner together. The sisters argue about the house being sold because it's their childhood home. The father died some time ago from cancer. Uh, anyway, so then they're getting ready to do presents. And there's a knock at the door. D. Wallace lets this guy in. Cloak, bandages, bandages. You know, kind of the elephant man. Are, are you, is your name... D. Wallace, or whatever a character's name is. 
lets the guy in. Lets the guy in. And yeah, she says, you know, the whole, but it's Christmas. Okay. So they sit down, and he keeps saying, I would like to read my letter now. And they're all kind of talking to him like, Ugh. like, you're a creep, you stink. He starts talking about, oh, and then uh, the uncle's like, we were about to open presents, so if you don't mind, it, what are presents? The religious son-in-law that gives him a whole spiel about the three wise men and gifts and why we do it. D. Wallace then gives him a present. It's a jar of peanuts wrapped in gold paper. And he's like, oh, it's the most beautiful present. They're like, take the paper off, man. So he does. He's like, oh, I love them. Again, just wanting us to feel bad for him by literally doing the elephant man. Oh, also that jar of peanuts we set up. The uncle put those peanuts out for snacks, forgetting that the youngest adopted daughter has a peanut allergy. That's another thing. This movie sets itself up so much. There is so, so frequently foreshadowing. But I will give it credit. So then finally, I'd like to read my let, like the 14th time he says, I'd like to read my letter now. They let him. And his letter starts going into, you know, th this area of the world on this date, abortion clinic. D. Wallace immediately knows what's going on. Thinks he's some sort of radical. Oh, he calls himself Cletus too, by the way. Thinks he's some sort of radical. Uh, had, you know, screaming to get out. The uncle throws him outside, takes his jar of peanuts, throws it at him, hits him in the head, tell him to fuck off. And then, of course, we had the scene of him crying, sobbing, running into the woods, falling. Again, really making us feel sympathy for him. And again... This movie teeters the line of pro-life and pro-choice so much. Apparently, the director, the writer-director, Craig Anderson, he originally um, he, he wanted to approach it from a certain side. Uh... I think he wanted to approach it from like, like an all right, uh, conservative approach. But that, that that made him nervous, so he backed it off a little bit. It, it it doesn't know what it wants to be. It doesn't know if it wants to, like at the end of the day, is it trying to be a pro life message, pro choice message, and it keeps going back and forth. Like it makes the Religious couple, all, you know, the, the murdering babies, the baby murderers. Then the other half is like, but it's a woman's choice. She could have this baby that she doesn't want. It, it just teeters it. And again, it, it seems more, it seems more confused than it does focused on being, you know, even in the middle. And again, it does feel like it's just trying to be shocking. That's why it seems so unfocused. Is it so focused on trying to be shocking that it's not even aware of the lack of sense it's making? So anyway, just stuff goes on. Cletus makes it back to the house. And this is what I mean by setting itself up. Now... The youngest adopted daughter with the peanut allergy. She goes outside for something. She's walking around. 
She looks around. She sees this empty jar with the news with like a note under it. She looks at it, and then we see that there's peanuts all over the ground that she's even standing on, and she's just kind of long, long scenes of pe what inside people are doing, and then her outside just kind of standing there. It sounds like she's starting to wheeze, like it's gonna be like a peanut allergy. And I was thinking, okay, this could be an interesting death with the peanuts we've set up and established, these peanut allergies. Then all of a sudden, we just get like a shot of like her feet on the ground, and then we hear, whoosh, whoosh, and we just see her kind of split in half with the intestines falling. So, okay, it sets itself up, and then it goes in a different direction. It surprises us. A couple times that works here other times like with this it the fake out isn't as interesting as if it did what we thought it was gonna do I thought the peanut death would have been a little bit more interesting and different than her getting cut in half good fake out I didn't see it coming uh, we don't really see the family's reaction to her the camera holds on everyone inside the house, and they all run outside. Then we hear them screaming and crying. It is kind of muffled. I like that shot. I like the shot of seeing the inside of this Christmassy house and hearing the reaction. It was kind of like on Hereditary, like when he's laying in bed and he's waiting for his parents to go out to the car. So they all, and then they find the jar with the note. They realize it's him. D. Wallace and the uncle have a secret conversation. She pulls him in the, he pulls her in the closet to say, okay, I'm the only one that knows where you were and what you did. Do you think it's possible that that's him? She's like, no, no, he's definitely dead. So then they go out to leave, and there's no doorknob on the inside of the closet. She's like, can we please get this door fixed? More foreshadowing. We know that's going to be used later. Anyway, uh, they all decide to barricade themselves in D. Wallace's room. Uh, Joe, the Uncle Joe has to go outside to get a shotgun from the shed. So she has the guys... The, the husbands and Jerry, the son with Down syndrome, watch the windows to call Uncle Joe while he goes out to the shed. There's another fake out because Joe leaves his phone inside, of course. He leaves it on the kitchen counter. But he's like, he has this flashlight. He has to keep like winding up. He breaks it. And it falls so this long scene of him looking for it, picking it up, looking at it. And the husband of the foul mouth wife, he's the one calling him. And so the way the music and the camera is pulling in on Uncle Joe, we think, okay, he's outside, he's screwed. But no, it shows that husband on the phone, and then he gets a from behind uh, axe right to the top of the head Cletus was already inside so okay that's a fake out that I thought worked how did he get in the house we don't know but and yeah, I, I saw this the other night I'm trying to and there's a lot of these slow motion scenes because the the pregnant wife, who was the, the the wife of the guy that just got killed, they're yelling, don't let her in here, don't let her co come out here. But she goes out anyway. And then when they're trying to get her downstairs with all the screaming and crying, dramatic music, slow motion, trying to make it swell up and make it emotional. Inside had more emotional gravitas than this did. It's trying to, I think it's trying to be that heavy. 
but I just don't think it has it. Uh, they do call for the sheriff at one point. The sheriff comes out. And ba it's basically all just leading up to Cletus trying to get her to admit that she loves him. You know, do you love me? It takes her forever to accept it, but it's mostly this cat and mouse throughout the house. Eventually, she does... Oh, and then throughout most of the second half of the movie, the religious sister and the pregnant sister stay up in D. Wallace's room because she's going into labor. Throughout most of the second half of the film, that's what they're doing. So everyone else is going around the house. Uh, Joe is going to try to get his car going so that they can get her to the hospital. But of course, he, once he's in the car, Cletus is already there. He's strangling him. He tries driving and going crazy. The religious husband goes out, gets nicked by the car. D. Wallace runs out, sees that Joe's been strangled. Gets everyone back inside. She does confide in the religious husband what happened. That it wasn't a miscarriage while the father was going through chemo. It was an abortion. And it was because... <clears throat> she says it was because... Um, Well, I'm trying to think because there's different points of confession here. I think she does tell him that after Jerry, and she knew that this baby was going to have Down syndrome as well, she said she couldn't risk it. She can't have two Down syndrome kids. So that's why she decided to abort it. But she says, promise you will never tell anyone else. He promises... But then we get to this one point where it, it's the religious husband and Cletus. They're in the kitchen. And we we have seen Cletus sort of talk religiously before. So the, the religious husband, <clears throat> he must know he's going to die. So he gets down. He starts doing the Lord's Prayer. Cletus starts doing it with him. And he's like, shall we pray together? Cletus nods his head. And that's what he says, okay. And he starts praying, you know, for, for the family and Cletus. And unbeknownst to him, Jerry is just on the other side of, side of the hallway. Cletus starts praying for forgiveness. Or the husband starts doing it for Cletus. While confessing D. Wallace's abortion, Jerry hears this. Jerry hears that she was going to abort him, uh, abort Cletus because of Down syndrome. And obviously, we see this tear Jerry up. He then goes to the closet where D. Wallace is hiding. Well, actually, first. The religious husband is doing this to buy time because the kitchen's a mess. He sees a knife on the floor during his prayer. <clears throat> conveniently, after he's done confessing D. Wallace's sin, he goes to stab Cletus. Cletus gets in a fight with him, like pushing him over, has him over the counter. At first, I didn't know what happened. I thought it was a cool effect, but... I, I kind of thought he was like squeezing the husband's head until his eyes popped out. But he forced his head onto a blender. And it was on YouTube, so I couldn't really see that well. But it looked like you could see like the propellers of a blender. Because it's an overhead shot on his face. You could like see the blades of the blender on, through his eyes. Then his eyes pop out. And I like how we get the side view, the profile of his head. 
the empty sockets like blink a little bit with blood squirting out. I thought it was a decent effect. So after that happens, that's when Jerry grabs the shotgun, goes to the closet that Dee Wallace is in, and makes her confess. He was like, you know, did did you w even want me? Do you love me? Like, did you did you really abort Cletus because he had Down syndrome? And of course, she has to come up with some shit. Jerry doesn't buy it. He slams the door on her. Then we have this moment where there's Cletus and Jerry. They're facing each other in front of the Christmas tree. Jerry gives him his Santa hat and then walks away. D. Wallace gets out through, I think, a window that's in the closet. She's walking around. She gets back in the house. She finds the shotgun. Sees someone sitting there with the Santa hat. Thinks it's Jerry. Hears someone walking down the hall. We see it's Jerry. Of course, she shoots. Not realizing it's Jerry. Shoots and kills her son. So now, of course, she's a wreck. Uh, which, just before that, she was confessing, you know reason why we wanted to abort was because or I wanted to abort was because daddy was sick couldn't afford you know couldn't chance raising a child on my own another child but that's when Jerry comes out she shoots it just keeps going on and on There are a couple scenes where she uh, tries to subdue Cletus by saying, like, yes, I do love you. You are my son. You're my baby. Of course, it doesn't work. At one point, the sheriff does show up, but there's a fucking bear trap somehow. And Cletus gets a hold of the bear trap, puts it, like, over the sheriff's head cool effect eventually it all oh another reason how she knows Cletus is hers there's this necklace with an anchor which she says she was wearing the day at the abortion clinic during all the commotion she lost it it resurfaces and eventually there is a scene where she has this anchor, a ship's anchor, out on the lawn or hanging on the house for a decoration with the chain. That comes in later. But the <clears throat> religious sister is able to deliver the pregnant, pregnant sister's baby. Uh, what the hell happens to... Oh... And this reminded me of Stitches because this is the scene where D. Wallace is out in the sheriff's car. Cletus comes out and she tries to, you know, act like a mother to him and shoot him. And whatever her plan was, it failed. So the religious daughter is going to come outside. She's yelling to her, don't come outside, don't come outside. She does. He stabs through her with an umbrella. And then, of course, it opens. Not, which reminded me of Stitches with Ross Noble. Wasn't quite to the same effect because another thing about this movie is, I don't know if it's because it was on YouTube and it was, severely edited or changed or if they're all like this because at the end of the movie when everyone's dead or even during a lot of the effects we just get up close of like a certain area like the umbrella we just see the tip of the umbrella as it opens and we see all the chunks and blood that's on it or we see like up close of 
the person that just got killed, we just see their feet. And like out of out of focus, we see the rest of their body. You can tell they're dead. So I don't know if it's like super zoomed in in some areas. But anyway, yeah. Cletus seemingly kills D. Wallace. Here's a baby scream crying inside. The new mother tries to hide the baby. She hides with it inside this giant teddy bear. She cuts it open, hides inside it. Which Cletus just thinks they're in there, just walks right up and gently pushes the knife in. Then pulls it out, teddy bear falls, bunch of blood. Oh, we also see the placenta on the bed that she gave birth on, so that's cool. That's very Christmassy. Which, with the lighting of this movie, because Cletus does cut the power very early on, yet the Christmas lights still work. So there's a lot of reds, purples, pinks, and greens. Uh, so yeah, we got to see a nice red lit room with the placenta on the bed. That was always cool. And then Cletus has the baby. This newborn baby. And eventually D. Wallace comes running out with that anchor again. It's tied around her neck. She hooks the anchor into Cletus. And then she jumps out the window. And the whole effect is she ends up hanging herself and ripping Cletus through the window and ripping his insides out all over the ground, leaving this newborn baby, the survivor, but the only one there. So the baby will be there until this whole massacre is discovered. That's the end of the movie. And yeah, the, it, this movie is so unfocused. The effects are fine. Oh, but before Edge, we do see all the dead people with this really slow, sad music. But we only see, like, up close to, like, their foot or, like, their arm without seeing, like, the full effect. Again, I don't know if it's zoomed in because it was YouTube or that's just how the shot is. But, yeah, okay, so we have Chris. All set around Christmas, we have abortions and abortion clinics uh, doing it because of Down syndrome. Uh, we have in your face anti uh, religious language and actions from that one uh, uh, married couple. Oppressed homosexuality from the priest's son in law. Because it. We get the idea he likes the the other son-in-law. Uh, the Down syndrome son pretty much learning that his mother aborted his younger brother because he was also going to have Down syndrome. And then her killing by accident her own Down syndrome son. It's trying to throw in all these heavy elements but it doesn't have the depth that's needed to pull it off or to make it even remotely effective. And I do think that's a detriment. It was entertaining enough to just want to see what happens. But okay, let's see what the resolution is. There were some fake outs. Like, okay, when the one son-in-law who's trying to call the uncle, gets killed because Cletus was already in the house. Okay, that's a fake-out that worked. The fake-out of the first family member death, the daughter with the peanut allergy, but he just cut her right in half uh, lengthwise. It was a good fake-out in that I didn't see it coming, but I would have rather him done something with the peanuts. I think that would have been a more interesting, different death. So, all the different fake-outs 
whether they work or not, sometimes it's not as interesting as what you originally thought was going to happen. Oh, D. Wallace being locked in that closet that she wanted the door fixed after Jerry tries to get that confession out of her. Yeah, a lot of foreshadowing. Like, they really draw attention to that girl's peanut allergy before, before the peanuts, you know, are out of the film. Like, they really keep bringing up peanut allergies. And they bring up this closet door needed to be fixed. It sets itself up in four shadows very obviously. And, okay, the, the guy that plays Cletus is Sam Campbell. He is just, whether it was his doing or it was Craig Anderson, writer, director, it was his doing, but he is just doing an exact impersonation of John Hurt for the Elephant Man. He's doing John Merrick. Every, even how his character is written, this sympathetic, wanting to be loved outcast. You know, I am so surprised there wasn't a, oh, you're not an animal scene. This is not really a good movie by any means. It's entertaining enough to keep your attention and wanting to see what happens. But it's pretty forgettable. I mean, I, I just did all I could to remember what I just talked about. I guess I can see why some people will like it. And the thing about this movie is whether you think this is pro-life or pro-choice... You're both right and wrong. It doesn't have a distinct path that it wants to take you down. It's purposely in the middle. But it is so in the middle that it even contradicts itself. So it's not very well thought out. If this movie was going to have the balls to be one or the other, it should have committed to it. Uh, I would have respected it more for that, regardless of which side it was on pro-life or pro-choice. If I had the balls to stick to one side, I I definitely would have respected it more. But no. So, if anyone in the comments is going to say, this movie is as pro-life or pro-choice as anything, and here's why, and I'd be like, well, you're also half wrong. Objectively. Because this director purposely made it halfway in between pro-life, pro-choice. Choose a path and stick with it. Don't puss out because yeah, he wanted to make it a full-on conservative film because he he's not conservative. But then he feared being accused of being conservative, so he backed it off a little bit. Yeah. You also take the edge away from the rest of your edgy moments when you admit that you backed off out of fear of being called something. So, I think it's another wannabe, edgy movie. Uh, I mean, it's for free on YouTube, so check it out if you want to. It's nothing crazy special. The effects are decent enough when you actually get to see them. D. Wallace, she's doing what she can. I mean, D. Wallace is good. She is able to make something out of this material. It's it's not her best. Again, uh, I, D. Wallace, I mean, everything from original Hills Have Eyes, The Howling, Cujo, uh, Critters, E.T., not a horror movie, but E.T., Scream Queen. Yes, Rob Zombie's Halloween, but yeah, Red Christmas... It's not that great of a movie. Uh, I guess this will be a mild rant, but... But believe me, I've seen way, way, way worse uh, Christmas movies. It's not the worst I've seen. It's not amongst the worst I've seen. It's just very unfocused and trying too hard to be something 
that it can't back up. That's basically it. 2016's Red Christmas. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh.